I'm James Ernest, and today we're playing Linus. Linus is a abstract, an ancient abstract game from a fantasy universe. And in fact, in the modern storyline, no one actually remembers how it's played. So it's a mystery to unravel. Uh, we are unraveling that mystery now. As a matter of fact, it's still in playtest. We're still working on it. But what I'm going to explain to you is what we currently consider to be the core game and uh, other variants may come up. They may actually supplant it, but it's uh, roughly the same kind of idea. And this is enough for you to get started. Uh, the game has just 12 pieces in a die and the pieces are one by one by two. The proportions one by one by two. Um, they find copies of this game all over the world. They, they find the pieces, but they have no idea what the rules are because it was once so popular that no one wrote them down. So in a game like this, sometimes you would draw the pieces from a bag, but um, historically that was rife for cheating and it also didn't give exactly the results that people wanted. And so they sort of formalized that bag draw with what we're doing here. We're gonna line the pieces up. Um, it starts with one white piece, then two blacks and two and two and two all the way to the back where we get one white piece again. And this is the sequence that starts at the front with number one. We're gonna roll a die to draw that piece from the bag. And so you can sort of see what your odds are when you look at the colors of the line, but uh, it's still a bit of a random draw. So the first player is gonna roll the die and pick that number piece out of the line, piece number six, and play that piece on the table. Now the piece can go laying down or standing up. It has to, of course, conform to the grid of any other pieces that are there. And the play space, the footprint of this game is limited to three by four. It's what they call a basket, a three by four basket. Now you can also play this game on a smaller basket, on a three by three or even a three by two, but the basic rules say three by four is as big as it can get. Anyway, none of that's relevant to the first player. He can either play this standing up or laying down, and either way, he's gonna get two points for it. And, and I'll explain that when I play piece number two, but player one always gets two points. We would be keeping score either by pushing coins back and forth or by writing our scores down. I'm actually not gonna track the scores for this game. I'll do it in the video and then we'll know the winner when I actually edit this thing. <laughs> That's how lazy I am. <laughs> All right, so player two is gonna roll the die and one, two, th just pick up piece number two. Now that's also a black piece, which is actually bad because when you play a new piece, you get points for the squares of the piece that are touching the ground. So if it's laying down, that's two squares on the ground and the squares of the piece that are touching the opposite color. So in a sense, the ground always counts as the opposite color. Um, black touching black doesn't score me anything. So I can just get another two points by laying down someplace like here. Now there are a couple of types of play that are not allowed. They're called royal moves and they're basically moves in parallel. You can't put two pieces side by side like this, either standing up or laying down or like this. You can't put two pieces in a straight line like this, either standing up or laying down. You can't do a royal move unless that's the only type of move that is available. And that is basically because they are typically worth a lot of points or they can be worth a lot of points. So because those are high point moves, they're restricted to only when no other options are available. And one of the potential strategies as you learn the game is to set the board up so that you get to make those high scoring moves. You lock out everything else and get to make a royal move. Um, player two doesn't get to do any of that. He's just gonna play, oh, there's no good way to do this. Let's put it like this. And that defines one, two, three by one, two, three. That's most of our basket, three by three. Player one is back online with a roll, roll of three, gets a white piece, and that piece is gonna go, let's say it goes here. The score that you get with a piece is multiplied by the height of the piece. So the height that the piece reaches, this has reached level two. So I'm gonna multiply by two. I get a point for each of the black faces that I'm touching. I get a point for the floor face that I'm touching, and that's three, and then I multiply it by a height of two, so that's six points for player one. Player two is gonna go now with a roll of three. He gets an identical roll, an identical piece, and might make an identical play. Um, he can put this thing in here, and that's probably fine. Let's see if you can see that as well as I can. That's, that's our configuration of the board now. Next roll of two gets us a black piece. This piece, it's not always best to score the most points that you can with a particular move. You also have to pay attention to what you're leaving for the next player. 
Um, if I play this anywhere flat, it's probably going to make a good move for a white piece. And if we take a look at what's next, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's 50-50 for the next player to get a white piece. Um, I don't know that that's all so bad. So what's the most I can make with this? I can make six because I can play it here. And it's uh, therefore, I'm going to play it back here so you can see it better. It's therefore touching two white pieces, two white squares touching black, and at a height of three makes it a six-point play. Uh, next, we're going to roll one, two, three, four, five, and pull a black piece. Uh, and here we go. We're going to do the same move again. So six points again. Next player rolls a two. That's yet another black piece, and that's not terrific. I'm going to spin this for you. You can kind of see what's going on here. There's not a lot of good places to put a black piece. I can't, and here I spin again. I can't put it here. That would score a lot of points, a few, uh, several points, but it is a royal move. It's two parallel pieces, so I can't do it there or anything like that. The basket isn't quite full, so I could lay this down here. I also can't stand it up here because that's also a royal move. Let me just spin it again here. There we go. That's a royal move, two pieces in parallel, so I can't play that piece there either. Oh, well, I'm just going to lay this down because that's what I'm going to do. That scores three points. Two for the squares on the ground, one for the white piece that it touches, and it's only level one, so that's three points total. The next roll is one, two, three. That's a white piece. That's a lot more opportunities. This is a royal move, so that's not permitted, but let's look at what it would score if it did. It's one, two, three times three. That's a nine-point move. That's quite a lot of points, and I can't extend the basket any farther. I... Oh, yeah, there's not a lot of good places to go here with this either. But I'll stand it up right here in the corner, and that's one, two, three times two is a six-point move. Now, if I roll more than the number of pieces in the line, I don't just start counting again. I always take the front piece. So I roll a five. I go one, two, three, four. I'm off the back, so I always take the front piece. All right, uh, where does a white piece go that's worth a lot of points? Turn this around so you can see it a little better. This is a royal move. We just talked about that. There's lots of royals. There's not actually a lot of legal moves left at this point. White is going to lay here and get three points. And that might be the best they can do. Next player rolls a one, takes the front piece off. Similar situation, but now there's a platform to build on. So you have to build with the grid, of course, and you also can't build an unsupported piece. So you can't be hanging off like that. That's why we bevel the end so the pieces just won't support each other. You also can't do silly stuff like that. It's got to be in the grid. And what I'm going to play here, this white piece laying here touches a black face and another black face, and that's four points because it's two points at level two. Now, I've left kind of a... I made kind of a bad move because I've left a good place for a black piece to lie down, and... Any roll but a two will get to play that black piece. So that was a four move, but um, it, it was illustrative of the rules of the game. I rolled a six, so anything but a two is going to pick up this front piece. What happens when I play this here, and what do I leave for my opponent? If I lay this here, I'm getting one, two, times a height of three. I'm only getting six points for this piece. And if I lay it here, I'm leaving a nice big black platform for the next player to get eight. So I should think about that. Maybe I get a six here instead. That's also six points because it's one for this white, one for this white, and a height of three. Player two is now not going to be able to lay this on the very top. Of course, when there's only one color left, you don't have to roll. Um, player two still has a good move, though, because he can play... I should have put this on a Lazy Susan. If he lays in here, he's touching one, two, three black faces, and he's at a height of three, and so that is a score of nine points. Now, you probably noticed that going second is an advantage, and we all know that. And so the best way to play this game is to keep score over two games. Each player goes first once. So we're going to do that again. The opposite player is going to go first. Once again, rolling for the first player's first piece. I get a two. That's a black piece. And whether I play it standing up or sitting down, it's worth two points. Uh, that's just, you might as well just mark that on the ledger. Uh, I'll stand it up this time. Let's see where it gets. One, two, three, four is a white piece. That's a better second move. So there's a couple ways to play this. This is, these are all kind of similar. I'll go with that. It's two points on the ground, one point with the opposite color, three points altogether. There's a one, two, three, four, five, six coming out of there. Another white piece. 
Let's just mirror that and get three points on the back. Here is a six. Two, three, four, five, six, another white piece. Another white piece. Wow, are we just going to enclose this? Is there anything better to do? I can stand this here, and I'm going to do it here so you can see it. I can stand this here. That is also worth three points. It's just one point of contact with an opposite color piece, but it's at a height of three, so that's three points. Uh, it does set up some good moves for black. Let's see if we get a black piece. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, we do. You can always kind of look at the line and see what the odds are of different kinds of pieces and know that that's part of your calculation when you're planning your move. Let me turn this a little bit here because I think the best place to play this is right here. That's not a royal move. These two are parallel, but they're not touching each other. And this is, they're parallel here, but they're offset. So I get one point for the ground, two points for these contact faces. That's three points, basically, multiplied by a height of two. So that's a six point play. We're still in a basket of three by three. So there's still some extension we could do. And if, um, if I had a black piece, I could do the same thing over here, but I don't and I can't. I can't slide this in here because that would be a royal move. Um, or really any place good. Uh, man. I'm going to go ahead and lay this piece here. And that's going to be a three-point play. Two for the ground and one for the black piece that it's touching. A two brings us another white piece. Now we know that the next moves are going to all be black pieces. Mostly all be black pieces. So I don't want to leave anything good. I'm going to stand this here, and it's only going to be worth two points, but it blocks a lot of good moves. Oh, no, it sets up a lot of good moves, too. Never mind. I'm not going to do that. I can't stand it up here and here. I'm running out of places I can make a non-royal move. Uh, there is basically just sort of this for three and a few other pieces that are on the ground a few other, and a few other moves that are on the ground. Let's stand that there. There's three points. I'm touching this black piece and I'm at a height of three. There's a two that pulls a black piece. What can black do on this board? I'm going to say one of black's better moves is this. And that's going to be a six. One for the ground, two for the white pieces it touches. A two, that's another black move. I'm going to keep susaning this thing around. It's getting harder and harder to do that. There we go. Okay, this is our board. You don't really have to spin it around like this in real life. You can just move your head, but, you know, all my cameras are fixed. So here is a place I can play this black piece. It is also worth six. The next roll is a one, another black piece. Still, not a lot of places I can play this thing. I can't lay it down here. That's a royal move. I can't stand it on the ends of any of these pieces. I can't stand it back here. I literally, there's only one place I can play it, and that's here. And that locks the board. Um, that's a three-point move. And now there are no moves that are not royal moves, which means the whole board is opened up to the next player. A six, which overshoots the line and picks up the front piece. So the next player gets this. And what's the best they can do with a royal move? I actually have a couple of choices here that are not equivalent. Um, if I play this royal move, I get nine points. That's one, two, three squares that are touching this piece. Nine points because it's three times a height of three. I can also get nine points here, similar configuration, but it's a different leave because if I play here, the last move is going to go there and that's eight points for that white piece. If I put the same piece here, the board is unlocked either way. There's only one move left either way. There, I can't put this white piece anywhere else but here. And now that only scores four points for the last player. So I want to leave, you know, the worst move that I can while scoring my Royal. And that's, uh, that's Linish. That's the state of the game right now. It's still in development. And I think we're going to see some other variations come along. Uh, but this is the core game. Uh, there's a version where we don't roll dice. We just pick what color to play. And that's a much higher level of strategy, although I also sort of feel like it's kind of a solvable game because there's only so many paths through that. I don't actually know. I haven't solved it, but it's not as fun for me as rolling dice because I feel like the pub game, the, the dice rolling game, takes me to interesting places and it gives me a chance to come back when I'm behind and all of those things. Um, we're going to do, once we sort of lock down what we consider to be the core game, I think we're going to make variations all over the place. We have different sizes of footprint, different sizes of basket. 
But uh, there's still lots of possibilities here. I hope you'll play it. It's hard to print and play this since it's just pieces of wood, but uh, make your own set if you can. Send us feedback when you do. Uh, let's make this game as good as we can. I'm James Ernest from Crab Fragment Labs. Uh, I hope you'll play everything we have at our website and enjoy every last one of them, and uh, I'll see you at the table.